In this video, you create block work walls and create a new wall type. A new material will be created for block work walls and added to the core area. A cut pattern and surface pattern will be added to the material. Begin by opening up project A. In our previous session, we created our concrete walls. We're now going to focus in on the block work. So let's begin by creating a new wall type. On the structure ribbon, select wall. In the properties palette, you'll note here that we have currently RC wall 350. In the type selector, let's change this to block work 140. Here, we'll click on edit type. In the type properties dialog box, we can now select the elongated edit button here to edit the structure of the wall. Just like our previous situation, when we're editing the assembly, it's always a useful idea to have a preview visible. And you can see currently at the minute, we're looking down on a plan view of our block work. Notice here that we have a finish face applied to each side of the wall. So this is shown with layer one and layer five. We don't really require these, so we're going to select layer one, and then here we can select delete. And then we'll pick on layer four, which is finish two, and again, we'll delete. So now you can see the structure is left and currently the material is concrete masonry units. Let's go ahead and edit this. So once we go into the materials browser here, we can then start to configure this. And you'll notice for a concrete masonry units, we have a surface pattern. If I select the surface pattern, you may remember from previous videos that we have two types of patterns in Revit. We have our drafting pattern, or model patterns. Of course, the model pattern is one to one. So you can see here, currently we have a block work uh, pattern, 225 by 450. We also need to change the cut pattern. So here, I'm going to select the foreground cut pattern. And in this case here, we want a simple diagonal cross hatch, and I'm just going to use the 1.5 millimeter one. If we check the appearance tab, it should already have block work associated with it, which is fine. So now we can click OK to our materials browser. And then OK to the edit assembly dialog. And once again, OK here to the type properties. So we're now ready to model the wall. So let's zoom up on the core area in here. On the context ribbon in the options bar, we'll make sure here that we're drawing this wall up to a height of first floor. The location line is going to be wall center line in here. You'll notice I've got chain off in this example and of course join status is set to allow and again here we have our interior block work 140. So what I'm going to do here is draw along this grid and you'll notice I'm snapping from wall center line to wall center line. Now the reason I've done this is Revit will manage the cut back to the concrete wall. To see this clearer, we can change our view. So notice at the minute we're in the site plane, and in the site plane it allows us to look all the way up and all the way down. If I open up 00, zero ground floor, you can now see all of the cut patterns being displayed. And of course you can very clearly see the block work is starting and ending on the concrete wall. So we're gonna create some additional block work walls. So we'll go back to the wall command again. And what I want to do here is create two block work walls that's going to contain this area here for a little storage area. So as I create these, again, I'm going to go from center to center in here. And again here, you'll see that Revit manages the cutback. Now, the only thing here is you can see that the block work is in fact going through the concrete column. Obviously, we don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to use the grips here just to pull that back. And to get this absolutely precise, I'm going to go ahead and use the align command. So to get the align command, we can select one of the block work walls. On the context ribbon, I can select align. And in this example here, I'm going to pick the face of the column just here, and then the end of the block work wall, and the same here. And also I want to make sure that the block work is flush with the concrete. So again here, I can pick the concrete wall that I want to align to, and then the face of the block work. And of course, I'll do the same with this face of the column and this edge of the block work. 
So you can now see the walls are complete. If we take a look at the 3D view, we can now see that block work constructed. Of course here you'll notice that it takes on board the correct materials as well. And of course if we look inside here we can see our block work wall inside the core. Okay, so let's make sure that you've saved the model. And that concludes the exercise.